and welcome to the Peddling Prince's Podium. I'm your host, John Ardelli, and tonight I'm doing a follow-up on the Grand Lake Road multi-use trail that was mentioned at uh, the Velo Cape Breton Potluck a few weeks ago. They're having a presentation on it tonight here at the university, so why don't we go in and join them and see what they're up to. I was a little disappointed in the turnout that night. Aside from the presenters, there were only four or five other people there. Still, it was very informative. I must admit, although I was aware of the project, I really knew very little about it, and their presentation gave a great idea of what they have in mind. The purpose of the project and the study is to design a multi-use trail along Grand Lake Road, uh, set back from the road a couple of feet, connecting Sydney to Glaze Bay, but also to the Mayflower Mall, the uh, um, Cape Breton University. It's going to be a trail for non-motorized active transportation, so we're talking about pedestrians and cyclists and inline skating and skateboarders and uh, people with mobility devices, the runners and athletes, people with strollers. You know, people really do enjoy uh, their own space between pedestrians and cyclists because they are uh, going at different speeds. Uh, but we really don't have enough room to build a separate trail for pedestrians and a separate trail for cyclists. So we think that it should really operate as a shared path. So that means that all trail users keep right and pass left. Uh, so the faster users yield to the slower users. And we ask that you know, cyclists and other people passing give an audible warning, whether it's their bell or, I'm passing on, my le on your left. Uh, we're looking at rest areas. So the rest area would be a place where you would have amenities for users, so benches, a waste receptacle, there might be a, a bike parking rack so you can lean your bike up against the rack, go sit on the bench. And uh, we're looking at perhaps coupling them with bus, the bus stops so we could have a bus shelter at that location. There would be mapping uh, showing you that it's not that far to ride uh, further into reserve mines, for example, if you were at, uh, at the university. Uh, we're going to have some more open houses in the spring, so once we have those design drawings ready, and we have some solutions to some of the problems that we can show the public, we'll come back and, uh, and have, have you uh, take a good look at those design drawings, and then we'll have a final report to our, uh, our steering committee. After the introductory presentation, they had a question and answer session. Most questions dealt with the cost of the project, potential issues with land use, and so on. However, I was concerned that motorists might believe that cyclists are required to use the path. Will motorists be made aware that faster, more experienced cyclists have the right to use the road if they wish? And that is a problem when you do have a side path. Uh, so it's part of that messaging to the public that cyclists do belong in the road and they should be respected on the road. It still needs to be out there uh, with the motorists. The following night, I was at the McConnell Memorial Library for Jacques Cote's presentation on winter cycling, also mentioned at the recent Bellow Cape Breton potluck. The turnout there was much better, and even free refreshments were provided. What I liked most about it, though, was all the great advice for beginners. This presentation actually is not to tell you you ride in storms. This presentation is just to demystify the uh, cycling out of season, out of July and August. So cycling uh, outside of those uh, July and August is beautiful. You have June, you have um, May, you have uh, April. Usually at the start of the season, April, just after March or March sometimes, people getting, geez, they have, yeah, they have something in their legs, they want to go. And uh, why not going? It's because winter? No, not true. Roads are probably not nice, but there's beautiful weather to ride. And the same thing at the end of the season, past uh, September, October, beautiful days, beautiful days. Days are shorter, you have to uh, exercise caution sometimes, uh, time your uh, outings for uh, coming back uh, without, uh, without light sometimes, but uh, that's something you have to, to watch for. So today, uh, Winter cycling or cycling off season. This is the uh, subject of the presentation. So getting started, we, we get started cycling off season by just extending the season. You want to get out, you get out. But you don't have probably the right clothing. This is no problem. There is no specific fashion for a cyclist. As long as the cyclist is comfortable in his own clothes, visible cycling, probably in the winter you will go for uh, studded tires. But in the meantime, if you don't have them, just choose your days. When there's no snow on the road, no ice, you choose your days. But building the, the, uh, the inventory is something that you can do all year long. 
and you can start with something that you do you have in your closet for cross country skiing for snow shoeing take that stuff and go out with it and uh, use that uh, your uh, bicycle is a road bike carbon high tech you don't need that you don't need that to extend the season if you want to go winter you need something that will protect you from the elements from the dirt on the road from the water because there's more water in the spring and the fall and also the, the streets are not that clean in the fall and winter especially with all the salt and grime and everything so you gradually build your equipment and uh, you see what works what doesn't work as you approach the colder part of the year and uh, what works you keep it and uh, what doesn't work well you put it aside and you make your own experiment being part of a club is where you meet you socialize and you talk about your own experience be part of a chat group like Yahoo group you also have the opportunity to talk about your own experience you go on the internet again full of uh, full of advice it's very important to uh, to go out with friends uh, you have power in numbers when you see two cyclists on the road, don't forget, there's a witness there. <laughs> when there's one cyclist on the road, no witness. More times I've been brushed by when I was alone than the two of us on the tandem. Uh, Sometimes you want to do uh, transportation, go to work, for example, a beautiful day, you go to work. Run errands, it's uh, something that you can do on a bike uh, to get started. Commute, off-season again. And winter, you will come into winter and you will not even realize it. it looks like Norma Moore of IBI matters. Group, who gave the presentation on the multi-use path the previous night, was at Jacques' presentation too, and she had an amusing winter cycling story of her own. Well, I was in Ham uh, Hamilton, Ontario, and it was the coldest day of the year so far, minus 25, and, and I just got out and went, oh, I think it's about minus 10, I think I'll ride to work, and I went to work, and my feet were frozen, and <laughs> the next day I went into work, and one of the guys at work said, Norma, I saw you on the news, and I said, what, you were on your bike, and they had a little video shot of people on the sidewalk, and all the hot, the steam, you know, the breath coming out, and people getting on the bus, and then you rode by, and they just panned, <laughs> and, I went, and so I, I listened to the clip, and they said, well, it was minus 25, and I said, oh, no wonder my feet were so cold. <laughs> Jacques also shared some more advanced techniques and tricks for the winter cyclist, including some clothing that he himself uses to keep warm. After the presentation, I managed to catch up with a good friend of mine, Lonnie Jones. He'd love to ride in winter, he says, but he faces a few challenges. Uh, well, the cleaning of the bike and maintenance is going to be the big issue because I don't have a lot of room at home to bring a bike inside and work on it. So. Uh, Maybe if I can pick myself up a beater bike that will actually run in the winter and uh, not putz out on me, I might be able to do something like that. I, I know there's been plenty of days this winter that I've wanted to get out riding just because I wanted to be out. Uh, winter has a somewhat sedating effect, effect on me and uh, I tend to stay inside cocoon way more than I should. But with the sunshine and the road's not too salty and not too slippery, who knows, I may be out yet. Well, it's time for me to head home, so I hope you enjoyed your time at the Pedaling Princess Podium this week. I'm your host, John Ardelli, and hope to see you all again here next week. Bye for now.